Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, January 24th, 2018. Take a quick look at the equity markets as we head into the final half hour of trading here today. This is the S&P 500 future, 60-minute chart. Uh, same chart I've been showing for a while, just uh, walking our way up with uh, up this uptrend line here uh, with these small divergent highs, small corrections along the way. Um, most recently pointed out here, we had divergence on the RSI, but not on the uh, MACD. And uh, we've carried up a little higher now just recently in this last thrust up from that uh, previous high. Uh, we've made a, a very steep divergent high. You can see the steep divergence down here on the MACD and the RSI. Uh, we had a pretty pretty impulsive red candle today also that uh, on the 60 minute chart at least that engulfed uh, goodness, uh, you know, the last dozen or so candles, uh, bearish engulfing candlesticks. So uh, it looks to me, you know, this this. This run up, the New Year's rally, is extremely long in the tooth, and I think it's a matter of time. In fact, uh, we'll probably know by Friday. Today's Wednesday. Like I said, we're almost done with trading today. Friday, we have GDP along with durable goods uh, and some other reports that come out before the open on Friday. Uh, remember, it is we are getting into the thick of earnings season, earnings season so we have uh, quite a few companies uh, that will continue to report in the, in the coming weeks here. And so if nothing else, uh, you should expect volatility to, to pick up a little bit. Um, but again, just back to these charts, looking at the index charts, uh, this is getting very long in the tooth, this rally. So um, I think by I think it's safe to say by Friday, if not sooner, we'll probably see these trend lines break. And uh, there's the targets. They're they're labeled uh, right here. You can see the first target comes in around 2808. Uh, these are all potential targets. I think at this point in time, there's just not a lot in the charts to show that we're going to have anything more than maybe a 3% uh, pullback, give or take. But we'll just have to see how things develop. You know, we'll have to look at the the nature and how impulsive uh, the next uh, pullback is how you know which which of these support levels hold which don't hold uh, we'll look at volume and things like that uh, so let's move on to the nasdaq 100 futures same story this is what i continue to harp on uh, we've had absolutely no sell signals for a while now um, but we're right there. We're knocking on the line here. This is that uh, the primary uptrend line, what I call, again, I refer to as the New Year Rally. Uh, we're testing that level again. Same thing in the NASDAQ today. You can see that big red uh, reversal candle right there, pretty bearish candle. We shot through there, and as I often talk about, if you're trading a 60-minute time frame off the 60-minute charts, you want to see a 60-minute close to trigger a sell signal. Otherwise, this is just intraday noise. As you can see, we snapped right back up above that trend line. But with these divergences really steepening here at this point in time, uh, like I said, I think a, a pullback is, is coming very soon. And off the recent highs, that would equate to, if we hit my first target now, we're at about 3.5% pullback. And if we hit that second target, which I think is a good good shot that we do, that's about a 4% pullback. So that's what we're looking at right now in the NAS. And finally, let's take a look at the data. Same story. As I said, the charts right now on the large cap stocks, they're all in alignment, meaning you have these trend lines. If one breaks, the other is going to be right behind it. And the safe bet, because the trend has been so resilient, is wait for a break and 60-minute close of all of those. So you can see there's some horizontal support there around 26, 143 on the Dow. Uh, when that goes, here's your next support level. And uh, this would probably, this would at this point in time, be my final uh, target for a swing swing short on Dow or Dow futures, which we're looking at here on the 60-minute chart. Probably the the biggest news, or the biggest development in the markets today is uh, the slide in the U.S. dollar. You know, I'm looking for a pullback here. And what happened? This slide that we just had uh, overnight or earlier today, we had the uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary. Um, it's welcome, made some comments about the dollar, some very uh, dovish comments, welcoming the weakness as that it helps, you know, manufacturing and other things like that. And that goes against um, the U.S.'s policy. Traditionally, we've maintained a strong dollar policy. Uh, so that kind of caught the market off guard to hear the Treasury Secretary, you know, welcome weakness in the U.S. dollar. 
personally, I think that's just a fleeting, you know, reaction to the news. Here you can see the chart. We're looking at a 60-minute chart. Uh, you can see this MACD starting to curl up here. If that happens soon, we'll have a divergent low, and I think we'll bounce back to any of these levels right here. You can see um, uh, the levels marked in blue right there. So those are bounce targets. Now, because of that, you know, the most, uh, the, the primary dollar sensitive assets that I track are, are gold and crude oil. Uh, so that gave gold a pop today. Gold's up a little bit more. And uh, so is uh, crude. Crude's having a strong day. Um, if you're watching this video, I'll probably keep this one restricted to, um, to members of the site. Uh, so I'll go ahead and mention that I shorted, you know, uh, both XLE as an official trade personally. And it's nice to see all of the energy stocks are down. When I'm saying the energy stocks, I'm referring to the various ETFs, which hold a basket of those XLE, XOP, XES. I think XES is even down by a percent. Now that, um, considering the crude is up two and a quarter percent, a lot of that has to do with dollar weakness. Um, that tells me that the, you know, the fund managers, money managers out there, they're, they're not buying this rally in the crude at this point. So I still think the, you know, the upside is, is minimal on crude before a decent reversal. Again, I put up a detailed post stating the reasons for that last night and just wanted to make mention that, uh, you know, that's one reason crude's not a short trade on the idea, but the energy stocks are. Uh, if I get a second here, maybe we'll look at those charts. But uh, just wanted to do a quick video here and 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 make mention that despite a, a very strong day, a very strong day in crude, that is not carrying over to the energy stocks, and that is a change of character. It's very unusual to see crude rallying over two percent, and all the energy stocks on balance, of course, being being down. There's silver. Silver broke that support. I highlighted this yesterday, and then boom, snap back. And of course, it's at, you know, silver is also a dollar sensitive asset, so you're catching a nice bid. And that was also a false breakdown so far, so that was pretty bullish. Uh, you had a, a reversal there, and then let's look at platinum as well. Platinum, uh, not as strong. Platinum is still doing a kickback. It, it's actually gone a little higher than I thought. This kickback rally. Remember, platinum, we had a very clean. Uh, uptrend line here that was broken, impulsive selling. We hit my first target to the penny, reversed, and now we've gone on to make a back test. So um, back test trend lines are, are fairly common uh, once broken. And so now if we come back down, look again, you might get another reaction here at that 9265-ish support level, but it's already been hit once. Uh, so I do favor a continued move down to about 90 uh, 980, 979 right there, somewhere like that before uh, on the next major or significant reaction. Nat gas, I didn't cover nat gas yesterday. I left that one out. Uh, you know, we had for a while there these series of divergent highs and pullbacks, divergent highs, pullbacks. Uh, it broke out. This is a pretty key level here, that black line. Uh, that was resistance going back a while. You can see quite a few reactions. So we're above there. We've had a sharp rally. Uh, last couple of days, but we gave back, uh, you know, a good deal, about half of that so far today. So near term, I'm just not seeing a lot in the chart. See, you know, I like to trade NAC gas if it comes, pulls back to support, for example, and the, and the indicators, you know, confirm right here. This is my, my next decent support line down there around uh, 326 all the way down to about 322. But right now it's in no man's land. Uh, that's what I call it when it's between support and resistance. So uh, I have no, no desire to mess with natural gas right now. Okay, let's just go ahead and wrap it up there. Um, again, uh, what stands out to me right now, what we should keep an eye on, I think, are these 60-minute uh, index charts. Watch for a break below uh, the trend lines, these 60-minute uptrend lines on all those uh, three major large cap indexes, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. Um, and again, there's nothing in the charts at this point in time that uh, don't really indicate anything much more than a, a quick pullback trade. But uh, depending on how you trade it, you know, if it's going to be quick, uh, especially if you can get in, get out on a day trade, you can use quite a bit of leverage. Uh, you just don't want to take too big of a position home overnight because, again, it is earnings season. And, again, we have some big, big uh, economic data coming up on the calendar, especially on Friday morning. So uh, I can almost assure you a gap one way or the other on Friday morning. So just be careful what you take home. And don't forget to check the um, any of your positions for earnings. I have an er a link to an earnings calendar on the front page of the site on the toolbar to the right, Tools of the Trade. Uh, take advantage of that and make sure you know when your positions report. 
This has been Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.